Good evening, everybody. Ty Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully, everyone's doing well. So, with this most recent update here, because we did talk about this thread a little bit in the morning, along with the week-long forecast, with the uh, weekly forecast, we've had a few more changes occur. So, we're just gonna dive right into that here. So, as far as Tuesday's threats concerned, we have had another change. For one, we have michigan back into play here with this threat with us being in the 48 hour period now we can actually look at our hazard types tornado threats in play and now we have indianapolis and chicago or the uh heart of those cities out of it for now fort wayne is still in there and then we also have gary indiana south bend hammond toledo might be in there too and then we also have still a good chunk of eastern and maybe even northeastern parts of illinois in the mix but that actually has not been the main topic with this setup neither is the wind threat it's actually been the hail threat the 15 percent area is a <coughs> within the 15 percent area is a hatched risk for significant hail which is basically hail above two inches in diameter it can do a lot of damage here and this we have chicago we have toledo in there as well we have indianapolis we have fort wayne of course and all the other areas that I previously mentioned. So that's gonna be a big threat for tomorrow that we'll have to keep an extra close eye on. I do actually think that there is a chance that this goes up to an enhanced risk, but perhaps not a tornado-driven enhanced risk, maybe a hail enhanced risk. Wind could still be pushed up to an enhanced risk as well, but I'm really thinking hail is gonna be the big, gonna be the big talking point here for today. So that being said, let's go ahead and get into the model data here and start to get into the nitty gritty here. If we, we'll start out, of course, with the wind profile. And the thing to make note of is, of course, and I've been talking about this for a while, true troughs interacting with each other. And basically what I want you to pay attention to is this wind barb right here. This wind barb is going off to the east in this direction. So... As we're doing that and we're getting into peak storm time, which would be right around 21Z, which would be a little bit after lunchtime for these guys. That's when I would expect storm development to start occurring, but it would only pick up by the time we get towards sunset, maybe a little bit after. I do think that this is going to end up being a little bit more towards a nocturnal event. We could start in the afternoon, but we're definitely going to be on for a while once things do get going. Good news is... I do think that we will lose a lot of instabilities we get later into the evening. We'll get into the details of that momentarily. But anyway, let's go ahead and look at the low level jet. And I'm going to draw that barb or I'm going to uh, show an, a depiction of what that barb was looking like at the mid to upper levels of the atmosphere. OK, so we have it going this way here and I can't seem to get it to stay. All right, I got that fixed now there we go but as we go forward here i want you to watch what happens with this these low level winds here look at how they start to turn as we go towards this direction later into the evening that is the main reason why we have that five percent tornado threat and why i wouldn't be surprised to see an upgrade i consider it somewhat unlikely for the tornado threat but it would not surprise me if we got the 10 percent. it really depends on how things trend for tomorrow but we won't know that at least until tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon. At that point, either I will make a morning video or go live. But that being said, let's keep the ball rolling here. Because that low-level energy is going to be sticking around at least until the late evening, maybe even some of the overnight hours. But with the anticipation of that instability fading out as we get later into the evening after sunset, this shouldn't be a super long duration event but i think there is a window where we could see a few tornadoes there let's go ahead and get into some of the parameters here such as that instability that we're talking about here it's a mixed layer cape so we're looking at all levels of the atmosphere for instability and you can even see that there is a decent bit of instability here tonight there's actually a marginal risk and effect here but given the other parameters the main thing that we're going to be discussing on that is the hail threat Here's the sounding to go with it. You can see a marginal tornado threat, but if you look on this hodiograph here, when you see little uh, kinks like this at going from uh, one to two towards three, 
it doesn't always lend itself very well to the tornado threat. Could it still happen? Yes. Would I be surprised if it happens? Not entirely. Marginal risk have been uh, kind of hit or miss all throughout the year. But one thing I want you to make note of is that hail is the uh, hail threat right here, the significant hail parameter index parameter. We're at a 1.5. Whenever you're at a one, sometimes you'll see a hatch risk if you issued if other parameters are in play. With this setup, there isn't at the moment from tonight. But if we go ahead and fast forward a little bit further, let's say a good 12 to 24 hours, we'll be talking a different story. And a large part of that is due to these lapse rates right here. Normally, when you see a seven, that's a pretty steep lapse rate. We're seeing eights here. So that's telling a lot. That tells you the story right here, pretty much. So as we continue to go forward, this is heading into the, that peak time tomorrow. Look at that. 2000 joules per kilogram better lift index watch what happens here still got those steep lapse rates pushing towards an eight but now we have better moisture return here really good instability and of course we already talked about the kinematics here so the tornado threat with this increases notably at this point this isn't the best hodograph i've ever seen but nonetheless here it's one that definitely uh, paints the picture pretty well. So as we continue to go forward, this instability remains. And it's really once we get in towards Indiana, where I've become a little bit more interested in the kinematics. This isn't the best setup due partially to inhibition, but look at how steep the lapse rates are once again. Steep lapse rates. And look at the result. Significant hail parameter at 2.7 wind threats picking up as we get later into the evening downward cape or downdraft cape being at 814 800 is a threshold number so we've broken that and then on top of that our instability is still very impressive at this point so like i said this is a dangerous storm system that's trying to take shape here or that's about to take shape here just what we'll see from that is still a question but fact in the matter is Parameters are set in play to where we could see some significant severe weather here. So I need you all to stay weather aware if you, especially if you happen to be in these areas. Never hurts to be weather aware in general. But if we go to the significant tornado parameter, and here's a little interesting thing to make note of. And this is why I further suggested that maybe there's a chance you could see a tornado tonight. Not a high chance, but there's one nonetheless isn't the most like i said not the most impressive photograph or skew t chart that i have ever seen but it's not like the chance is zero here the uh lift index works against it just a little bit but it's still sufficient enough to get something going here that low level spin right here is a point of interest but i think the main topic once again like i said earlier is the hail threat and the lapse rates pretty much tell you everything you need to know getting right at that eight range and actually surpassing it in some parts of the atmosphere so enough looking at that let's go into the actual main event here so we get towards 22z and look at the value starting to go up we're already getting into the threes we'll look at this one first and this is when we start getting those little bit more dangerous soundings we're getting into the uh, pds tornado soundings not something that you should read into too heavily but by this point the cap is broken and these storms are starting to get going. What's working against this is this storm is slightly elevated at the moment. If this or this environment would have the uh, rotation maybe slightly elevated still. If, you, if you're looking for a tornado, you want this more so towards the surface. But of course, like I said, I think earlier in the day, tornado threat is going to be higher. Hail threat is also going to be high considering the lapse rates. We go later into the evening that tornado threat will go up just a little bit but that instability will start to wane and this is what we're looking at by the time we get into a 1z across this region here notice we're looking a little different here instability instability has held pretty well at this region but we're also dealing with a little bit of a capping inversion which could limit storm development so with this even though the uh, significant tornado parameter was higher in the area i clicked a little bit different of a story being painted there but what we mainly want to be paying attention to is this uh, loop here in particular if you get over towards this region where we have a loop from zero to one that's showing this strongly where we're going from let's say 10 or 15 knots all the way to 50 
that's a telltale sign that we could have some danger going on here just thankfully that inhibition might help limit this and you can kind of see it even on here with the way this kind of loops out towards the right and then back towards the left that's going to help keep things a little bit limited but this complex game of weather continues especially as we go further off towards western michigan where we get some really high values we'll go ahead and look at this one real quick before we get going here look at while it's not a pds sounding this is exactly the kind of stuff that i'm talking about here loops like that are very dangerous and inhibition's a lot lower over here too so this has a much better chance of getting going and with this uh storm relative helicity 736 meters square per second square that could become a problem if things get going here everything kind of looks like it's in place here so i'm going to keep this sounding for myself actually in a minute here before we finish this video but all hazards are definitely in play at this point we're starting to get to 900 on down cape and a significant hail parameter 2.4 lapse rates are looking ridiculous so like i said this potentially could be a high ceiling event if things verify here and what's more scary about that is the fact that it's an overnight threat we will be here we will be live covering it but i do think things are still going are still kind of conditional at this point if instability verifies or uptrends we'll probably see an enhanced risk if not we'll mainly stay at a slight risk and maybe we may get a bust out of it it could be either or so last thing we'll do is go ahead and look at our reflectivity here so we get two complexes of the storm this main complex of storms fires just before sunset here or right about at sunset and then these ramp up as we get later into the evening and then this area starts to fire off a bit later into the evening this is after sunset and we could see multicellular modes and eventually a line of storms form and this seems like almost like this setup actually ends up be almost acting at like a confluence band and these storms form the outflow of it possibly and with that we could end up seeing some damaging ones briefly but like i said with that instability waning as we get later into the evening and into the overnight hours this isn't going to be a uh, long duration event by the time we get to the overnight hours into the wee hours of the morning maybe this will start to wane notably by the time we get towards tomorrow morning though much different picture heavy rain some thunderstorms likely severe limits though i don't know if we'll meet them at that point but that being said that's all i got for this video here hope you guys enjoyed it if you did you know what to do smash that like button leave a comment and hit that subscribe button if you are new around here that being said appreciate you guys like i said we'll be live tomorrow and i will see you then if we need to we will make an update in the morning till then take care and have a good night